Hi, this is John from Snap on John 100, and I'm here in the shade, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about posture with a bow drill and why it's so important. Um, what you're looking for is a maximum amount of friction and heat with a minimum amount of effort through your own effort. So to that end, you want to have the spindle exactly perpendicular to the hearth board. You want it like straight up and down and you want it to be um, just spinning on one axis and not wobbling because any wobble uh, takes away from the heat transfer and the friction. So uh, with that end I'm going to show you a little bit of what I know and believe about um, posture and why it's important. First let's talk about uh, some of the components and things that I believe um, that make it easier. For the spindle obviously you want as much um, friction as possible so with that you want in mind you want to have a broad flattened tip like this. The other end that's going up into the bearing surface you want to have pointed but what's really important that I see some people make a mistake is this angle right here you want this angle um, to be pretty uh, shallow so that it tapers up instead of having a steep angle where it's real pointed but it starts way up here and just goes in the reason for that is because in the um, as you're spinning you start developing a shoulder let me get my bearing block out what I think most people's problem with, with uh, getting a coal is they lose their speed and it has nothing to do with this end it has everything to do with this end right here and when you put this end in the bearing block if you've got um, a real steep angle what ends up happening is the bearing it's the sides of your hole right here start um, digging into the top of the wood and you get a shoulder developing up here and that slows you down so you don't want to have a shoulder develop up here so if you start seeing any marks down in here the angle right here is too steep so you want to make it um, start way back here and gradually uh, come down to a point so there's nothing that can touch in here and it's you want it as narrow as possible uh, all the way back here um, the tools I'm going to be using for this is um, I'm going to be using a buck 110 um, it's a beautiful knife I got from uh, Christmas from a friend at work and his wife and uh, I really like this a lot so I'm going to use that and I'm also going to use my trusty Swiss Army knife saw and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, start this off. I'm going to start my, there's a little divot right there. I'm going to start my spot right there. And then um, we're going to carve out a notch and everything. And once that's done, I'm going to start, um, well, actually, I'm going to start talking about posture right off the bat. So uh, I'll have to try to get this camera set up so that you can see uh, more of it. Okay. Posture. And sorry about all the noise. I'm going to try to show you all different angles. But the hearth board down here, you want to put the hearth board. I made it already black in the spot right there. That's where my uh, divot's going to be. And you want to have this spot as close to your foot as possible because what you're looking for is stability and being perpendicular and you've got to put everything against your shin so you want to have your hand close to your shin that way and you want to you, you want to put your bearing block in the palm of your hand and so then you want to have it like this so that your if it's close to your boot you can it automatically lines up so you don't want to have it if you have your foot way over here or 
if you have the toe under the hearth board like this, like I see some people, then now I have to move my hand away from here. So now this part of my wrist up here, my forearm, has to be stable. So now I've got all this slop up here. You want to have your wrist and right up by your hand. That's the most stable. And to get it there, you've got to have the hearth board right up under the center of your boot, right under your instep. And then um, the other thing is you want to have a 90 degree angle here. Okay, so straight up here and down like this for stability. Now, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to um, show you the posture now. I'm going to put my foot, the instep, right under, um, the hearth board is right under my instep, and I'll move this away. There's my ankle and shin. The other important thing, so every once in a while I see, is people not having the, the, the um, spindle on the outside of the string. To get that, you put it inside with the hot part up and then just twist it around the string that puts it on the outside if you have it on the inside you can still create a fire but you got a lot more trouble because you want to have long strokes as soon as you get up in here that thing's going to grab and jerk the spindle right out of your socket and wreck everything right at the most inopportune times so you want to keep it on the outside of the string so you want to place it here and you can see I've got it my hand is right up against my uh, shin, so it's my hand and arm up here. You want to have the, the bow parallel, and you want to have enough space to, you can, it's easier for me to do more sideways, but I see if you got your leg farther over, to me this is more stable. So that part, it's just whatever's comfortable for you. Um, I got a little bit hip arthritis, or arthritis in my hip and so it kind of bothers me sometimes even being in this position for very long but what you do is you see how now you can keep the bow the spindle straight and perpendicular so you get maximum heat transfer and you want to use the entire bow just like this all right so now let's see if I can get a coal. Um, but that's the, the reason why I wanted to shoot this video is because I see so many people straining. You can see all the muscles in their forearm and they're straining as hard as they can to keep the thing from rocking back and forth. And you don't have to work that hard. I'm huffing and puffing just because I'm so fat it's hard for me to bend down like this and still breathe. But I'm working on it. But anyway, you want to keep your posture good and you want to keep that spindle right up close to your boot because that puts your hand right there and that makes it the most stable because now your whole your whole your body is locked in instead of if you got it too far most people put it way up here now you've got if it's in your hand now you've got to have this part of your wrist up against your forearm and you've got this whole from here out spinning around bring it right back here and right up close to your boot. You wanna be it so close to your boot that it almost touches. Now let's see if I can cut out a notch and, and uh, get a coal. For, you, for this, I'm all about conserving your, your equipment. And so I saved my knife blade for um, fine work and finish work. And if I have to cut something like a notch out, it's a lot easier for me to use a saw, which takes a lot of material out quicker and more efficiently. Then I follow up with a knife to smooth it out and finish it the way I want it. So instead of, so I always have a saw with me either on a Swiss Army knife or my Leatherman. And then I finish up with a sharp blade. And I also use a secondary blade. I don't use my primary blade that I want to keep razor sharp. I use one um, secondary blade for most of my carving tasks. So let's get to work here and see if we can get a notch cut out on here.
we're going to put a notch in this piece of wood right here <clears throat> and we want to put it straight away from the center right here I'm going to I'm just doing it like this just so you can see better which actually you can't see very well okay apologize right like this this is kind of hard doing this without a tripod and without somebody else helping you but I'm going to start it and I'm going to go to about the center just just shy of the center of this hole it can even be in the center it doesn't really matter but the key is it needs to be about an eighth of an inch wide and I don't care if it's u-shaped or uh, triangular shaped a lot of times I just make mine u-shaped but the key is that it's about an eighth of an inch wide because if you don't have it wide enough you get tons of smoke and if everything fills up but you miss out because you're, you're starving it for oxygen and you need oxygen to get that coal um, or get the the, the uh, sawdust embers to ignite so at least of an eighth of an inch notch this bottom part here I also relieve just like this in a triangular shape you can see this one that's relieved that's that's this is kind of torn out but see how that's relieved right there it allows more air to get in and your um, your coal sawdust fills up in there but it's mostly just to give you some extra oxygen okay I'll get back to you when I get the, the uh, notch created okay I've got it roughed out with the saw as you can see um, I've relieved it it's a little bit um, asymmetric it looks pretty symmetrical from this view all right and now I'm going to uh, take a knife and clean it up. The other thing is too, if you don't get an ember, don't just automatically blame yourself um, for not being fast enough or drilling it hard enough. Check the technique. Most of the time is um, if you don't get an ember, you need to just modify your notch a little bit. I found that if uh, I get lots of smoke and it looks like I should have an ember and it uh, just doesn't take off, um, I look at my notch and then I... Um, just widen it a little bit and try again and presto I get a, a great coal so um, I'm gonna clean this up with my knife and then I'll get back to you okay this notch looks plenty big enough and it's more of the triangular shape see that and then when you turn it this way you've got a relief underneath and the thing that's pretty important too is if you notice the transition where the relief is up to, up to the top is uh, smoothed out so that the coal, that the sawdust can fall down without um, hanging up on any junk. So you see I've, I've kind of smoothed, smoothed it out right in there on both sides so that when you look at the transition from the reliefed part up to where it goes um, up the rest of the notch, gosh it's hard to um, sorry about that. When you see that relieved area, you can see it's a smooth transition. Okay, now let's try to see if we can get a coal. Okay. I hope you're going to get a good angle here. I'll try to get off to this side like this. Okay. Make sure you got a 90 degree up here from your shin up across your thigh. And I'm just going to use a piece of paper. Make sure that's in view. Okay. Now, just carefully position my foot. Okay. Now you see my where my spindle's going to be. It's close there, so that when my hand is right up against there, it can be straight. Okay. I hope this is showing up because I can't show you all different angles the same time. I wish I could, that would be great, but okay, and believe me, this position um, hurts my shoulder enough I can't really press down hardly at all. So you with that condition you've got to you can't um, I can't put any extra effort into it. So I have to use posture to make sure it's stable. So that's why it's also important is because 
you don't want to use up all your calories or get completely exhausted trying to get a fire started. Use the whole bow. That should be good. We got a coal, and it didn't take a whole lot of effort on my part. But that, my friends, is just why I thought it was important to um, go over this, shoot this video so that people could see that um, it didn't take as much effort as people think, and that if you use the correct posture, you end up saving a lot of uh, energy and um, have an easier time of getting success. God bless.